This video is brought to you by M1 Finance. Get $30 when you deposit $100 on the platform. Link in the description below. Good afternoon, Mr. Young. How are you today, sir? I'm good. I'm well. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a rising star, an entrepreneur named Mr. Jermaine Young, and he may not be able to make it for the live panel discussion on entrepreneurship as a career choice going forward with Urban Upbound on June 9th, 2021 mm -hmm. at 1 p.m. So he agreed to do a pre-recorded message of this interview so we can have this on file and to share. So let's jump right into it. Yeah. Mr. Young, how did you get started as a business owner? Um, well, I got started actually, um, my brother, like he, um, is, you know, I, I do, I'm into real estate and it was something that I've always wanted to get into, but I've always just been kind of like blinded by my work to where I never got into it. He jumped into it first and then like, kind of like showed me like, yo, like, like, like do this, like, this is, it's not hard, you know, simple, like, you know, especially something that like people that have a busy schedule can actually do and, you know, showed me how simplistic it was and actually just gave me the courage to actually just want to go ahead and just, you know, jump into it. It was really just no more excuses. Okay. Well, what do you tell us more about what you mean by being blinded by your work? Like, I mean, I've been working since I was like 16. I've always had like a job. And, you know, I just always was just, you know, stuck in that. Like, I would just, I was one of those that, you know, would say, oh, I want to, you know, do this, or, you know, I want to buy rental properties, or I want to open up, you know, a restaurant or something, you know, like people say those things, but then there's no plan to action behind it, you know? So once I seen like my little brother do it, and then like, he gives me the blueprint and like, look, like, this is what you need to do. And like, it's, it's simple. You know, it was just like, I had that moment where it was like, I had to like, stop making excuses. And it was like, is this something I want to do and do it? If not, then just, you know, leave it alone. So I was like, I wanted to do it. So I got into it. Okay. Well, with the real estate, is it like commercial or residential properties? I deal with residential properties. Oh, okay, great. Well, what experiences have you had that prepared you for this entrepreneurial journey? Um, I mean, it's basically like just networking. Um, cause the way I do it is like, like I buy rental properties, like, you know, in other cities, like even like, for example, like Detroit, I own a duplex there and I've never been to Detroit. Wow. So I have to have people skills to, you know, bring the team together to make it work because I'm not there. So I have to find people that, you know, can do the mortgage, find, you know, the agent, find, you know, the right person to do inspections, find the right property manager. And I have to essentially bring them together. If you don't have the right people skills and you're trying to do investments in real estate, especially like long distance, and it's like people that you don't know, you never met, you know, you're going to have a hard time. So you got to have those kind of like people skills and networking so where you can, you know, essentially just bring the team together to make it work. Okay, wow, that, that's interesting. So you mentioned networking and you mentioned generally people skills. Can you be a little more specific? Like what type of people skills are required to be successful as an entrepreneur? Like, I mean, just simply like not afraid to ask for certain things. Like, or like if you don't know something, you know, find someone that can know. Like, you know, I mean, if you're going to be like an entrepreneur, you're not going to know everything and you can't physically do everything. So you got to be able to bring in people in place that can do that or people that do know the answer. OK, great. Thank you for that. So you mentioned that the nature of your business, you're you're renting apartments to. Correct. OK. And mostly out of state. You mentioned uh, Detroit. So that's uh, that's Michigan. Any Correct. other states in this country? North Carolina. North Carolina. Wow. And you're and you're in uh, New York, correct? Correct. I live in New York City. What borough you represent? Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn is always in the house, no matter where you go, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, so Mr. Young, what does your typical day look like as an entrepreneur? You know, for the for the type of work that I do, you know, in like like my business. As far as like, you know, doing rentals and the way I have it set up, I have it set up to where it's so simplistic to where 
I can literally go a whole month. And if I'm like at full, you know, capacity, meaning like I have no vacancies, I have no work involved to do. Like the only work I would have is like, I go and I'll see my account, you know, to where the mortgages come out for the properties. And in that same account within by the 10th, the latest, all the rents are in that account. Wow. That's all the work I'm doing. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, wow. outside of that, like, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really um, like a passive income approach. And that's passive. what I like, you know, it's passive income where you do the work up front, you know, and once everything's in place, you don't really have to do anything no more. So I don't have to pay attention to anything anymore. As far as the rental properties, as far as it being out of state, I have property managers in place. You know, it goes back to like, you know, networking and, you know, building the right team around. I have a property manager for Detroit that handles Detroit. I have a property manager for North Carolina that handles North Carolina. They, you know, uh, you know, do my bookkeeping for me, uh, make wow. sure that everything is the tenants need, the tenants get any problems with like say toilets, anything like that. They go to the property manager. They take care of that for them. They do my rent collection for me. Um, you know, they take out a small fee and they send me that money every month to my bank account. I have to do nothing. <laughs> wow, wow, you have a you have a team. Well, Robert Kiyosaki yeah. told us that business is a team sport and you you have obviously taken that cue. So it sounds like there's a lot of things to like about your business. But what do you like most about your business? I like the simplicity of it. Um, I like the fact that you know, like, don't get me wrong. I love the whole process of when I'm on the phone every day and I'm, you know, in the midst of, I got a property in escrow and, you know, I'm speaking to the, um, you know, the agent, uh, speaking to the, you know, the person that's doing the loan, um, speaking to the person that's doing the inspection and all that. I love that whole process. You know, it's like a whole 30 day process and I love it. And then after that, you know, once it's turned over to the property manager, once I've closed, and fixing all the things that need to be fixed, getting everything in place for the new tenant and the whole process of finding a new tenant. I mean, but that's mostly the property manager that does that, that vets the tenant. I don't, I don't have any, you know, input or anything in that. They take care of all that for me. They vet the potential tenant and all of that, make sure everything is good with them and they'll give me the green light. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Wow, is there is there anything that you don't like about this business? <laughs> I would say, um, I mean, I've had, I've had small instances of things that I don't like. Where I've had like, um, you know, times where I was trying to purchase properties, and you know, certain agents because they know that I'm out of state, they try to play games with me. They try to get one over on me. That's happened before, um, but luckily enough, you know, I'm more experienced now to where I know certain things. And also I've had like a few headache um, tenants, like uh, mm -hmm. I have two tenants that are like complete headaches, one that, you know, doesn't pay the rent. And then my property manager tried to put her in a program to, you know, where they would pay the rent for her. And she just completely like blew her off and was like, she didn't want any help. So it was like, okay, wow. I'm trying to help you. You're not paying the rent. So then it's like, now I got to go through the whole eviction process because we wow. tried to help you. Um, I've had, you know, another tenant that, you know, we did a, um, we served her with the, uh, rent increase and she just refused to play the rent increase. So, you know, you gotta do the eviction on that, you know, mostly like problematic tenants. I had one tenant that, um, um, I had did a video on it on my YouTube channel where this tenant had moved out and had lived at this place. And when they moved out, they completely trashed the house. I mean, left it a complete mess. Mm -hmm. And it cost me like $13,000, um, you know, to get it ready for the next tenant. So, I mean, it definitely has its drawbacks. Like you could, you can have those headache tenants that are, you know, problematics. Um, you can have things like that with tenants, you know, they leave and then they leave your house a complete mess, you know? So that's, you know, something like that. You know, I've also heard where people just move into other people's houses and they don't pay rent at all. Wow. You know, I luckily haven't had that bad of a tenant with that kind of experience, but you know, I've had my little experiences. I, I would say the worst was when that tenant had moved out and, you know, once I got the estimates from the property manager, 
of like, you know, how much it's going to cost me total to get everything, you know, cleaned and back to normal. It was a total of 13 grand I spent. I mean, they left the house a complete mess. Well, I'm sorry that, that you had to deal with that. You know, I think generally most people are good, but I was interviewing a gentleman the other day and he had on a shirt that says people going to people. So people going to be people sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that regard. So what has been your greatest challenge thus far as an entrepreneur? Um, greatest challenge, um, I would say, I would say scalability. Like I can, I can scale more, but then also, you know, a lot of times with in real estate, some people scale too high, too fast to where they over leverage themselves. So like after the last deal I did where I bought the duplex, I kind of like slowed down because I got to, that was my fifth property. So I was like, okay, I'm like halfway at my goal, but let me like take time to step back and reality, and, you know, um, take a look at everything and see where I'm at. So it was like kind of took a, took a breather because last thing I wanted to do was to over leverage myself. Okay, let, let me, just, just for the benefit of the audience, when you talk about scalability, and in this instance, are you talking about doing too much and growing too fast? Correct. Okay. Correct. You know, sometimes companies like, you know, they do that. They grow too much too fast to where they take on too much debt that they can actually handle. Uh, I see. And, you know, um, I'm kind of glad I did because the, um, you know, the crisis that we just went through with the market and everything, you know, there's no telling how it could have turned out for me. Thankfully, like, you know, I was able to, you know, survive it, you know, comfortable. I was good. But I mean, like, from the, from the first property that I bought, and to the last, I was buying a property every year. Wow. Every year I had made a goal to buy property every year. And um, uh, one year I had bought two properties. So, you know, once I got the five, I was like, let me pump the brakes for a bit. Let me slow down. Cause I mean, I, I was like, it's like an adrenaline rush you get. You get all <laughs> in and, you know, like, I remember I was started looking at commercial real estates. I started looking at uh, trailer parks, you know, in the Midwest and stuff, you know, and I was just like, let me just take a moment and see. Because my goal was like, as far as like real estate, I wanted to get to a total of 10 properties. Wow. So right now I'm halfway there. Wow, that's wonderful. Congratulations and well wishes for your continued success. Now, you you. Sound, you, you're very welcome. Now, you sound very busy. How in the world do you manage your work and your personal life? How do you manage uh, I mean, it's, it's really about just balancing your time. You have to balance your time and, you know, make schedules and, you know, just pay attention to detail with, with certain things. So like, like as far as like real estate stuff, that's more of a passive um, approach, uh, more of like an active approach would be like my YouTube channel. So that's like another like uh, business in its way, in its own way. But, you know, if I don't, produce and put out videos, you know, I won't generate revenue. I mean, I'll generate some revenue off of my old work, but if I want to like continue to bring traffic and bring, you know, um, things to the audience, I have to keep pumping out videos and keep doing that. So, and in order to do, do all of this, you have to just be able to, you know, balance things out to where you have a schedule and stick to that. But then also like, um, if you can put a team in place to like, you know, take certain things off of you to where you can focus on other things and makes it a much easier. Like, like I already have it to where my, the real estate pretty much takes care of itself. It doesn't need my immediate attention unless, you know, there's an issue with a tenant to where a tenant needs to be evicted. And even still, I'm not really needed in that. The most I'm needed is just say yes or no. Mm. And like, say if a property goes vacant, they will have to send me over estimates and then give me, my, you know, I would give my final word on, you know, certain things. So other than that, it's pretty much, I'm not needed to focus on that. Now, as far as like the YouTube thing, I've always said, like, once I've grown to a certain um, level, I would, you know, start outsourcing certain things. Like I'm going to hire an editor, someone that can edit my videos so that can take it off of me. So then I would have more time to focus on, you know, other things. So it's all about that, like, you know, just balancing things out. And I would say, like, you know, um, certain things, like, if you can, just, like, outsource them, you know? 
Wow, thank you for that. Now, with uh, your your scheduling, is there any particular apps you use, like Google Calendar or something like that? No, I just you use my iPhone. Oh, use your iPhone calendar app? Yeah. iPhone? You're using yeah. that inferior technology? You don't have one of these in Android? No, no, no. <laughs> as, as an Apple shareholder, I use uh, my See, iPhone. <laughs> say, say that again, please. As an Apple shareholder, I use my iPhone. <laughs> I messes with you, man, because a lot of people, they wear all of this branding but they never, they don't own like like Nikes. A lot of people like to buy the new Jays and everything, but no, yeah. but they don't even own Nike stock. It's cheaper to buy a share of Nike stock than yeah. it is to buy a pair of Jays, which is kind of funny to me. Not but, only that, if you put it in like this perspective, if you buy enough Nike stock and Nike pays a dividend, if you own enough Nike stock, Nike will pay you enough in dividends so where you can go buy those Jordans so you're not spending your own money. <laughs> my man mr young with the put on now th <laughs> thank you for that now the um you're 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 a young black man how important do you think it is for black indigenous and other people of color to be pursuing entrepreneurship as a career choice i mean it's um very important because entrepreneurial in any aspect, no matter where you go with it, you know, it gives you a certain freedom that you don't get from your job. You know, like um, when I was sick, you know, I couldn't go to work, but my tenant still paid me rent every month. You know, my YouTube channel still was paying me every day. You know, even when I wasn't able to put out videos because of my old content. So things like that, you know, is why I say it's important because like you can have a job. You what happens if you lose your job? Mm. You have no income, you know? So I always tell people like, you know, if even if you don't get into like some kind of entrepreneurial thing, just put yourself in a position to where you have multiple sources of income. So that way if something falls off, you still have others, you know, to back you up. But entrepreneurial gives you a certain level of freedom that you don't get from your job. I mean, heck, you could build a business to where it can get to where you don't even need to be there anymore. It could be like a restaurant. You can start off, you're the chef, you build it from the ground up, and then it may get to where you can hire other chefs. And then it could get to the point where you don't even have to be there anymore. You can be on vacation, you know, three, you know, four months out the year while your restaurant is, you know, paying you, still working. Wow, that that's awesome. Like how many employees in or contractors do you have working for you? Um, as far as employees, just two, and that's just the property managers. Or uh, as far as like contractors, what we always do is we always send out bids to different contractors so they can give us a bid on how much they'll do things. And then so we'll send it out to like four different contractors and then they'll let us know like, you know, what's their estimates on certain things and then we'll just go with the lowest um, bid. Wow, that that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Now, are there any, any other tips you want to share with anyone that's looking to pursue entrepreneurship as a career path? Yeah, um, I would just say like, if it's something that you want to do, like if you want to open up that hair salon or, you know, open up that barbershop or any anything, whatever you want to do, you know, put a plan in place and just do it, jump into it. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be things on, you know, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, you know, find out and get what you need, get those resources. Like, as far as like starting businesses, a lot of people don't know, you can go to the um, SBA, the Small Business Association, and they'll, you know, guide you in certain things. They'll give you a lot of uh, information and data and research on certain businesses in certain areas. So, you know, it's always a way where you can do it. You just have to say like, you know, I'm ready and I want to do it. You know, you just have to, get over that fear aspect of failing, you know, and, you know, it's hard. Like anything you do as your first is going to be your hardest. Like my first property I bought was my hardest. It was the hardest one because it was, it was new. I didn't know what I was doing. I was brand new. And, you know, I even remember like the agent asking me like, you know, okay, you live in New York and you want to buy this property in North Carolina and you're going to use it as a rental. How are you going to manage it? And I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm wow. saying? So, but, you know, yeah. you just, you just figure it out, you know, and you move on. You're going to have like things that's going to come up and you wasn't prepared for it, but that's, you know, part of life. 
So if you really want to get into business, you really want to, you just have to like, you know, say, I'm ready to do it. Put aside any excuses, any issues you have, just figure it out and do it. And that's it. Wow. Thanks for that. And you mentioned the SBA, the Small Business Administration. Is that a free resource? I believe so. I never had to use them, but I just, I, I'm familiar with them, but I've never had to use them. So I don't know if they're free or not, but I would, I would think so, but I'm not hundred yeah, percent. If it's, if it's by the government, if it's government, yeah, it sounds like a government agency. So they're yeah. probably uh, free. And um, it's the same agency that was giving out all those loans, the PPP loans. Oh, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah, true. it's just that a lot of people didn't know about them before those loans was going out, but yeah, they're, they're there that help you if you want to start and build a business. Okay, wow, that that's great. Now you mentioned your your brother, your younger brother at that, yeah. as a as an inspiration for you to get started as an entrepreneur. Has there been any other inspiration that you any model that you follow to as a business owner? Like, is there anyone that's really inspired you? Um, I would say like really just him, but. You know, I read like, you know, books and stuff. I watch, you know, uh, a lot of videos on YouTube. I listen to podcasts and stuff. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but books like what? What uh, are some Rich titles? Dad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki, one, okay. Yeah, that that one right there, uh, Millionaire Next Door, um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Uh -huh. So like stuff like that, you know, and just um, listening to podcasts and stuff and listening to people that have done it. Like it's a lot of people like, you know, like the billionaires out there that have done it. And, you know, it's one, one thing that, um, I can't remember the guy's name, um, but he's like big in real estate. I can't remember his name right now, but um, he, he was saying that like, you know, if you really look around at all the top billionaires and people that are really rich, is one thing they all have in their portfolio, and it's real estate. Would that be a? That sounds like something Robert G. Allen would say. No, Grant Cardone. That's what. It was. Oh, Cardone. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Grant Cardone. He, you know, he was saying like, you know, if you look at all of those top billionaires, you know, all of them have one thing in common. Like, no matter what they did to get rich, as far as, it could have been stocks or you know, building a business, anything, but they all have real estate in their portfolio somewhere. Wow, wow, that's great. Uh, well. I got to tell you, you've given us a treasure trove of information. Uh, thank you for your time. This is great. Do you have any uh, final words you, you want to share with the people? Um, you know, just whatever you want to do, just, you know, stay consistent and, you know, don't let nobody influence you. You know, sometimes, you know, you telling people what you want to do is more, you know, harmful than helpful because, you know, a lot of people are quick to say like, oh, well, you know, you can't do that. And it's not the truth. You can't do that. So then they try to put that on others. So, you know, don't let anyone tell you what you can't do. You can do it. You can do anything you want to do. You just really got to put your mind to it and stick with it. You know, it's not going to be easy, but, you know, in the end, it's worth it. Wow, man, you sound like you read Think and Grow Rich or something, <laughs> where, <laughs> where the author said that uh, whatever the mind can conceive and you believe you will achieve. And also, he gave us a caveat that friends, family, and neighbors and coworkers are typically the biggest dream stealers. So it sounds like that yeah. what you, that's what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So you know what? I, I want to ask you this. Uh, this will be a final question before we close out. You still have a job, correct? Correct. So you, so you, you work. Uh, is it a part-time job or a full-time job? I work full-time. Um, you know, I do overtime also <laughs> sometimes. Still, you know. So yeah, it's it's really like a work-life balance you got to do. So you have a full-time job and you're growing a business where so far you have five properties in your portfolio. Correct. So it sounds like time management is really, really yeah. a key thing for you. Yeah, you have to you have to be able to manage your time. You have to, you know, like if you are somebody that's building a business, it's going to be a lot of parties you're going to miss. It's going to be a lot of meetups and hangouts that you're going to have to say no to because you're going to have to be spending those hours, you know, you know, nurturing your business. Like it's a lot of times like I know I have a I'll have a schedule where okay, I got to get a video out today. It's not recorded or anything and I have to record it and edit it and all that. 
and somebody may call me and say, hey, you know, we're going, to, you know, out so and so. And I have to say no, because I have to nurture it to that, you know. Wow. Well, again, Mr. Young, blessings to you. Many thanks and great appreciation for sharing your, your knowledge with us today. So I'll make sure to share this message to everyone. And thank you for your time, OK? Absolutely. If anybody, um, you know, that wanted to, um, you know, see anything like that as far as I'm doing, as far as like um, my real estate journey and, you know, other things I'm doing, they could check out my YouTube channel. It's um, just simply my name, Jermaine Young. Okay, and I'm, I'll make sure to share it via email and post it on our social media so everyone can subscribe to your channel. So thank you for everything, it. Mr. Young. All, all the best. Thank brother. you. Bye.